Hi guys, it's Sebastian back with another video for you today. I got a special guest here with me. It's Arlian Gachard of uh, Matia Premier Fragrances. And we're going to talk about him, the brand, and some of his other work. So if you're curious to learn about the perfumer Arlian Gachard, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Pleasure to be with you. Yeah, thank you for doing this. So, let's see. Uh, you guys are here in Cannes um, exhibiting for your own brand. Uh, and you just launched a new fragrance, uh, Crystal Saffron, correct? Correct. It's a new release. A uh, fragrance built like all Matière Première fragrances around the overdose of one ingredient. In this case, it was a saffron. saffron. It's, actually, it's actually a saffron that I sourced uh, in Greece. In the north of Greece, there's a region called Kozani, and they produce one of the most qualitative saffron you can find. Mm. Amazing for its brightness. Interesting. I have a Greek friend he recommends saffron from Greece, so maybe that's where it comes from. So, do you consider crystal saffron a leather? Because saffron has leather accords, right? Uh, correct. In fact, saffron is known to be a spice, but there's also this kind of leathery aspect to it. When I worked on crystal saffron, my idea was to bring the saffron to somewhere bright, white. Like the name, crystal, I wanted the fragrance to be very luminous. You know, most of saffron fragrances that are beautiful and that already exist um, actually work with the saffron in a darker way, so and some quite often more ambery, uh, more deep. In the case of crystal saffron, the idea was to create a genderless saffron, something that was extremely bright, extremely vibrant, so it's a combination of ingredients that are, in my mind, very genderless, such as uh, incense oil from Somalia, touches of palm rocks, and an overdose also that wraps, I think, the saffron of habanolide, you know, mm -hmm. that musk that is very, I think, uh, vibrant and vertical. All right, so this is your latest release, and you're just launching now, correct? Yes, we're launching now. That's our second launch of the year after French Flower. I think 2022 will be and is and will be the only year where we launch two fragrances mm -hmm. in a year. Okay. So you know, I think it's uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a special launch for us because it's a new a new take on, on spice. Cool. So you guys also just launched in the states. You're selling all over, and you have a deal with Saks Fifth Avenue, correct? Yes, exactly. I mean, it's. To me, it's something very special to be launched in the States because when I started my career as a perfumer, I, in fact, the desire to become a perfumer, even though I was from Graz in the south of France, I started from a trip in New York. And uh, so it meant a lot to me to launch Matière Première uh, in the US. Cool. So the brand is now, I think the brand launched in 2019, and you've been doing perfumes prior to that. Yes. Yeah, so we launched Matière Première in October 2019, but before that I was working as a perfumer for 20 years. Oh, wow. So I've been working for amazing companies such as Givaudan, Firmini, Schwiz, I think incredible, incredibly talented perfumers. And um, on top of that work that, I, that I've done, you know, working for different brands such as Narciso Rodriguez, uh, Versace, Issey Yake, I worked a lot for him, Comme des Garçons. But on top of that, I think collaborating with designers, collaborating with people who did, on top of their art, such as you know, creating clothes, but who also did their own uh, company, uh, was something very inspiring to me. I, I felt it was really something that, you know, it's beautiful to create fragrances for others, which is something I love, and it's uh, also a beautiful thing to create your own uh, your, your own, I don't want to say brand, we say maison sometimes, but you know, you know the idea, yeah. uh, with a certain philosophy. Cool. So how many fragrances are in the Matia Premier uh, collection now? So today there's 10 fragrances at Matia Premier that uh, have been launched since uh, we started. And I would say the specific thing uh, about Matia Premier, on top of having myself as a perfumer and founder, uh, is the fact that we, uh, as a fragrance house, own our own fields of tuberose and roses. Mm. And when I started my career in the years 2000, 
I, you know, I think perfumery, like for many perfumers and many people who work in the perfume business, changed my life. But after working for maybe 15 years, I felt on top of formulating for brands, I wanted also to produce some of my ingredients. And I opened an organic farm in the grass region. And this was, I think, the milestone of the creation of Matière Première. Interesting. Because Matière Première means raw material in French. Mm. And as a perfumer, you know, you, I like the idea of thinking that, you know, the thing I probably know the best are raw materials. So I wanted to create a fragrance house that was very factual. Mm. You know, a lot of people tell you that they have amazing ingredients in, the, in their perfume, and I truly believe it, it is. But in the case of Matière Première, I wanted you, I wanted people, whether they were expert or non-expert, to feel the beauty and the texture of an ingredient. Interesting. Cool. So you focus on a specific ingredient for each fragrance. So the saffron is the focus for crystal saffron, and uh, there's an incense one, there's a sandalwood one, there's a leather, there's a French flower, which is a uh, tuberose. Correct. And then there's the rose. Yes. There's also <laughs> an oud. There's to also remember a, everything. Yeah, I try to remember everything. There's an oud, but that's is that a, still a Harrods exclusive? The oud? Correct. It's a Harrods exclusive. Okay. So will that ever be made as a worldwide release, or is it always going to stay a Harrods exclusive? Uh, I don't. I don't know. To be honest with you, for now it's an Harrods exclusive. I think Matière Première has so many challenges about so many ingredients mm. and raw materials that you know. The beauty behind Matière Première is you take an ingredient and my belief is an ingredient is already a creation given by nature. It's made out of many different facets and molecules. And my role as a perfumer for Matière Première is to turn this ingredient into a perfume just by amplifying certain facets and reducing others. So it's a very simplistic, I mean, it's a fake simplicity which is a sense of style for me. Yeah. And that means that maybe if Tomorrow we, we were going to create another hood, we could do it differently. You know, there's so many facets in an, in an ingredient that you can interpret it in so many different ways. Mm. Okay, makes total sense. So you mentioned you've been doing fragrances for 20 years. Were you, were you interested? Is it because you were brought up in grass? That's why you got interested in it? or? Like you were just involved in the business somehow? Or? Uh, well, it's, it's a great question and it's difficult for me to answer. I feel very fortunate because I grew up, I'm, I'm in my family, seventh generation perfumer. Mm. And I grew up with people who were passionate about perfume. It was not about uh, making a living, it was about a, an art of life al almost. Uh, my grandparents were growing roses, jasmine, verbena. Uh, my grandfather was the expert of rose for a company called Roberté. Uh, my father was a perfumer, he created Lulu, he created Eden, he created De Cidola. And I grew up, you know, my godfather is Pierre Bourdon, created Cool Water. And at home you had all those people who were, I think, passionate people about perfume. And they were talking about, uh, uh, about perfume just like other people talk about football. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's, there's a way of living on top of that. Uh, I was lucky enough to have a mother who was an artist also, a sculptress. And so when you grow up as a young kid, uh, surrounded by this environment, where when you start to work in your 20s, you feel like, well, is this real life? Maybe I should, <laughs> maybe I should become a perfumer. You were born in it, might as well do it. And uh, so yes, I would say, from an, as I said, from an age of when I was doing some very general studies, um, I happened to start to work in a fragrance company, uh, helping people around. And I thought this work was amazing, and I started to study perfumery. Okay. And I really think that anyone can be okay. a perfumer. You know, it's really a matter of um, of passion, dedication, and you don't have to be from glass to become a perfumer. Uh, you just have to, I think, be lucky enough to meet people who believe in you, and that you believe in yourself. Cool, cool. So. What was your, one of your favorite creations for a brand outside of your own brand? There's a few uh, that counted to me. My first fragrance when I finished perfumery school was a, a Guerlain fragrance. It oh. was an Aqua Allegoria, and I was 20, 22 or 23 years old. And I was amazed to see that you had people who were, uh, I would say, visionary enough or crazy enough to trust a young perfumer. Wow. And, and I think it's the beauty of this of this um, of this industry you have to trust young people and 
I say that even though I, I'm getting really much older, but I think you know, young perfumers, there are plenty of young perfumers that are super talented. And I was very lucky in my career to meet in the very early, early stage, a bit like Francis Curjean, uh, who had the same kind of um, uh, career. To, to, to meet people at a young age who would let me create fragrances. So from the age of 22, I created a Gala fragrance, I created a, a Nina Ricci fragrance, was called Love in Paris. Then in America, with other perfumers, I created Shenzhen and Forgivable, which was mm. a, a fun collaboration. Oh, I was wow. young and okay. I was impressed by the guy. And I think when, I, when you create a fragrance, of course, it's a talent of the perfumer, but more importantly, the talent of the collaboration between a perfumer and someone else. Wow, yeah. Recently, I was looking at Robert Piquet fragrances, and it seems you've done a lot of fragrances for them. How is that? Uh, pro like uh, uh, what do you call it uh, involvement like how was like how did they contact you for yeah. multiple fragrances over and over well it all started I think in 2006 and the idea was to come back to the true uh, original formula of Haka. Oh, okay. And I remember, uh, to me, it was something that I loved because they asked me to do it perfectly, just rebuild the original formula, and uh, we'll see from there. Of course, the formula was super expensive, and you know, as a perfumer, I'm honest. I said, you know, you can always do cheaper, but it's not necessarily going to smell the same. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and the people who looked after Piguet told me, you know what, keep it as expensive as it is okay. because we want to be honest and true to what we give. And we started with this collaboration and then we built and built for many years many different fragrances for, for Piguet. And, and it's something that I love about that, that I also had with Isemi Yake, with Narciso Rodriguez, is the fact that, okay, you can create one fragrance, but the beauty is when you create uh, many numbers of fragrances through years, through decades, mm -hmm. so that you build a story with a brand. Okay, so you actually reformulated uh, Fraca? I, I came back to the original formula. Okay. The only, I, I remember at the time, the only ingredient that we couldn't use because they changed were animalic notes. Mm. Uh, but for the rest, we kept like all the original formulation of Fraca. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have the latest Fraca and I also have uh, Casbah. Yes. Casbah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Casbah was a take on incense, mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes when you create fragrances, it takes you hundred, sometimes thousand tries. Casbah was created in maybe 10, 20 tries. Oh wow. So there's no rules, which is a beauty yeah. of, of of creating perfumes. Awesome. So let's go back to Matier Premier. Uh, what do you see in the future for the brand? Well, you know, when we started Matière Première with my two business partner, Caius and Cédric, our idea was a certain philosophy behind perfumery. You know, the, the fact that we truly believe in uniqueness, the fact that we truly believe in amazing ingredients and the beauty of ingredients. So I think the future and our challenge is to remain true to our values, to remain independent and to carry on doing what we like the best is basically turning an ingredient and showing people that an ingredient can be fabulous and you don't need to make beautiful fragrances to be overly complicated. Cool. So do you have a, a note that you're still passionate about creating for the brand? Like is there something like violet maybe or iris? You don't I have an iris, do you? No, we don't. I'm often asked about what's, what's the next, and I, I would say that almost every ingredient is worth trying. Um, I'm currently working on different, uh, d d different ingredients, but I don't always get what I want. And I mean, the criteria for Matière Première is, you know, as a knowledgeable, in a way, perfumer, I say that, and I want to remain humble, but when you know what exists, you want to try to take your creation to somewhere that it doesn't exist. So surprise is key. And the other thing is, how do you create fragrance that have this kind of sillage, have this kind of aura without being old fashioned? How do you create a fragrance with a lot of natural raw material, especially one in our case, without smelling uh, like the fragrances of the 60s or the 70s? And this challenge and balance between uh, texture and modernity is really at the heart of Matière Première. Cool, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this uh, interview with me. I appreciate it. Guys, uh, 
so Mattia Premier is now selling in the States. If you haven't discovered the fragrances yet, please go check. They're actually selling at ZGO Perfumery in my city, San Francisco, but they're also selling at Saks Fifth Avenue, Lucky Scent, and many other retailers, I'm assuming. And the latest Crystal Saffron is out as well, so you can go catch that fragrance as well. Other than that, again, I appreciate you doing this video with me. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Goodbye.